Well, I finally come through the other side of feeling utterly nauseous, worrying about absolutely everything and navigating my way through the early stages of cycling in pregnancy. I've now reached the part where allegedly you're supposed to start glowing. Now, I don't feel like I'm quite glowing yet. I'm still definitely worrying about things, but in this video, I'm gonna take a deep dive into all things second trimester once again, turning to the help of my cycling friends. But before we go any further, I just wanna say a huge thank you to our partners, Cavendale and Ali for making this video possible. I'm Rebecca Charlton, a journalist, presenter and lifelong cyclist and as part of my job I have the great privilege of working with a number of pro cyclists, one of which is Olympic and five times world champion on the bike Eleanor Barker MBE and she's just a few weeks ahead of me in her pregnancy so we've been sharing our experiences. How are you doing? Yeah I'm pretty good thank you. Um feeling quite heavy, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's kind of the main, yeah, main feeling that I have at the moment. And can you tell me a bit about the decisions you had to make very immediately about the cycling? I mean, of course you're out at the Olympics. Um, yeah, how, how did you digest, like, what do you feel comfortable doing from that point onwards? Four or five days before, uh, before the race in, I thought, actually, yeah, this isn't a joke anymore. I think there is actually a reasonable chance that I, I could be pregnant. Um, and I spoke to the doctor and we decided it was likely that I was late because of um, a combination of the vaccine and maybe the stress from being at the Olympics and then being very preoccupied because I didn't want to find out for sure until afterwards. Um, I just didn't want to have that distraction. We put together a plan in terms of what racing was safe, what levels of caffeine were safe, um, what supplements were and weren't safe which it turns out that everything was but you just don't know at that point in time oh. so yeah we really put a, a pretty thorough plan together that was um that we were confident would be absolutely fine in the in the circumstance that I was pregnant but also that we weren't really removing anything that was um going to be really really important to my performance if I wasn't I flew straight home from Tokyo um without my bike so that actually was kind of taken out my hands a little bit that I ended up having about 10 days off completely, which I think I just needed to digest everything. Uh, riding was kind of the last thing on my mind. And then it wasn't really until I started trying to ride again, that I think a combination of um, some lost fitness and also being pregnant, being a little bit unwell, um, having a lot mentally to deal with, I just felt terrible on the bike. So it, it did take me quite a while actually to build back up. Um, and I think within a couple of weeks I was doing... Um, yeah, doing more like four hour rides again a couple of times a week, but very, very slowly. Um, I just kind of felt like I had no power in my legs and kind of put together my own plan, I suppose, um, with these rules that had kind of been confirmed by multiple people that were safe. Um, so the, the biggest thing that I kind of kept in mind was that I wasn't to go above 90% of my um, max heart rate at any point in time. Other, th other than that, if I felt, if I felt capable, I was able to do more or less any training um, that was physically safe. So I wouldn't go and do a Madison session, for example. Um, I mean, that's just a, just a bad idea. But I would go on um, a four hour, four or five hour bunch ride with uh, riders that I know and that I, I trust to ride in a group with um, if I felt capable of it on a given day. I think it's just exactly that, isn't it? Judging what you're comfortable with, because I think you can listen to all the advice, but you've also got to be confident in your decision. So some days I'll go out on the road and I don't feel any different to normal. Um, I feel really happy to be out on the road and I feel like I'm not really taking any unnecessary risks whatsoever. And then other days I can be riding on the turbo and think, oh, something doesn't really feel quite right. Actually, this doesn't seem like it's appropriate for me today, so I'm going to stop. Um, I think it's kind of important to take into account that that's going to vary day to day. Um, and I mean, I'm not actually riding on the road anymore, not because I don't feel safe. Um, although I was starting to kind of ramp that down a little bit now that I've got more of a bump and the baby is less protect protected by my pelvis and that kind of thing. Um, but also just because the position that my bike is in now, I've had to rotate the bars around to make room for the bump. So there's, I, I just, I literally can't take my bike outside. <laughs> it's the only way to do it. So if I'm outside, I'm on a mountain bike. And if I'm on my road bike, it's on the turbo. I had this pair of big lungs that come with a zip at the back. And I was like, wow, this is perfect because 
the more pregnant I get, then I'll just undo it ever so slightly each time. Um, and that'd be absolutely great. Except for that it's only actually fastened if the zip is right at the top. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I went for a ride. I was riding a mountain bike. My sister's on a road bike and we planned to meet at a cafe. Um, and I got there and she was like, oh my God, how long? <laughs> how long have you literally had your bum out for? Because <laughs> it had come all the way down at the bottom, <laughs> right to the very bottom, like to the chamois more or less. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to be a little bit more cautious with what actually is and isn't adaptable kit-wise. It's been incredible sharing experiences with Eleanor Walker because I think I got to the point where everyone kept telling me over and over, when you get to 12 weeks, you'll feel better. But at 12 weeks, I was still so sick. I felt horrendous and I just thought it was never gonna end. And she was that little bit further ahead. So she was like, yeah, I still feel bad as well, but it's getting slightly better. So it's been really reassuring. Feedback from episode one was just so heartwarming and it just made me feel so glad that I decided to put these videos out, to put my experience out there. Because I think at first, working in the cycling industry and this whole perception of you know you're supposed to look like a bike rider the whole time and I kept thinking well if I'm presenting videos on cycling tech with a massive stomach what are people are going to say but of course I think it's important that we do put ourselves out there I am still a bike rider I'm still riding and talking about it albeit pregnant so I just wanted to embrace that and it's been just amazing to see people respond in the way they have so I'm so happy that I'm currently not sick. <laughs> this is the thing that's just making me happy on a daily basis. Um, but now there's new challenges. I'm starting to really grow and I'm starting to need to change my bike position a little bit and stuff like that and maybe consider a bit more what I'm wearing on the bike too. So I've been riding a lot of turbo and gravel. I thought that when you got pregnant, I don't know if I got this from like Hollywood films, that you'd just suddenly have a beach ball and you wouldn't be able to do anything. And I actually found that, although I'm quite clearly growing now, I'm getting into the later stages of pregnancy, at first, actually my growth was very, very gradual. And so I found that I was absolutely fine on a normal set of drop road handlebars or gravel bars and actually was, was fine really. And it's only now that I'm starting to feel a bit uncomfortable and having to bring things up and, and find a new position. What Can and Dell have amazingly done with their mechanics is they flipped the stem for me um, in sending the synapse over. And actually this bike already has quite a relaxed front end. So it's been perfect for me in this stage of pregnancy I can get into a nice position and I'm not too restricted and I think it's all just again about going on feel I'm pretty comfortable like this at the moment but I'm aware that as the bump grows I'll probably have to start bringing the hoods up a little bit more I'll probably get a position that doesn't look too attractive but actually makes it so much easier to ride I've loved riding the Synapse I've currently got it on the turbo trainer but also I've been riding the Cannondale Lefty Topstone 1 and I've brought that position up as well and it just stops you from getting that discomfort when not only you feel like you're restricting the bump but also you don't want to start pedaling like this because I'm aware that then you're going to start getting problems in your knees and hips and, and you really don't want that. So again, just I think it's about looking at what's comfortable for you and, and just playing around with it, even if it makes it look a little bit ugly, which I think it will in the later stages of the third trimester. It's really interesting because I think the challenges of each trimester or so I've found so far have been completely different. So in the early days, you're not showing, um, you know, most people will, will still look relatively as they normally do. But your restriction then, I would say, is that a lot of people feel sick like I did. You know, that nausea makes you maybe feel less comfortable. So you can't beat yourself up if you just don't feel like riding at all. Because for a lot of people, that's their experience for the first at least 12 weeks. But I think once you get into the stages of the second trimester, that's when most people will most likely start growing so then you might be uncomfortable in a different way um, i found that once the nausea went i was more comfortable riding the bike than i was even going for a gentle walk it's really become my comfort zone so i've been really lucky and feeling quite good on the bike actually throughout the second trimester when I caught up with Dr. Ralph Mitchell, a GP, sports and exercise expert and cyclist, we delved a lot more deeply into the second trimester. Let's jump back to that chat now. When you get into the second and third trimester, maybe not third trimester because then there's other issues, but the second trimester, can you exercise harder? Again, is that something you should just check in with your midwife on? 
Yeah, again, it depends on each individual person. The most important thing, again, is by the second trimester, um, you will go through a lot more physiological changes very, very quickly. And some women talk about it as sort of the easier of the three trimesters because you're not too big and you're not as tired or sick at that point. Hopefully in the morning, sitting yourself and wears off, but you haven't got a huge bump that's going to keep you up at night and the baby's kicking you all night long as well. Um, so that's probably the one time that women say they're most comfortable being able to do exercise and do the things they want to do. However, it's important not to overdo themselves again. Again, stick within the safe guidelines. It's a, a marathon, not a sprint. Don't expect yourself to be able to improve physiological changes to yourself. You know, you're not going to add 40 watts to your FTP during your, you know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, and, you know, you will feel more tired, more breathless. You get these, this incredible change where your blood becomes slightly more diluted. So you get what's called a dilutional anemia. Sometimes I've, we've often had to look after women with that particular problem. So if anything, you're, you're slightly anemic. Um, at that stage in pregnancy, not everyone, but but some women. So you're not going to be able to thrash yourself to death as much as you'd like to be able to. But sticking in those safe, um, moderate ex intensity exercise, absolutely brilliant. And crack on and do those things. Uh, I really encourage every woman to do it. But yeah, don't be trying to sort of be, get up out the way in under 40 minutes. That's the kind of thing. And yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do out as much under that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a two-hour ride for me on a good day not pregnant exactly am i not far off uh, when they say, after christmas when they say your your weight is higher than your ftp that's you know it's a bad time isn't it <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah I might, yes. I might not cross reference that stat right yeah, now yeah. i don't think i want the answer to that so my biggest tip that i've learned on kit is actually especially as i've been you know getting more and more pregnant throughout the winter months is don't get up with absolutely everything and then faff around doing your pre-ride rituals. So I was trying to pump up my bike tires with all my quite tight Lycra on. And I was actually finding that, oh, you can hear now, I get quite out of breath just because the bump and the baby are obviously restricting everything and pushing up. So the moment you put Lycra on and then try and lean over, pump up your tires, do that sort of thing, you can feel quite restricted. So that's the first thing I learned is actually just like get your comfies on, get your bike ready to go out the door, then get your shoes, sit down and put them on maybe as sensible um, and all your kit and everything on because you can feel quite sort of breathless just trying to get out the door. And again, I think just give yourself a bit of space and time if you can to, to take a bit longer in that process and, and to enjoy getting out the door. Um, again, I think everyone's so different because bump sizes are gonna vary so much for, for each person. But I thought that I would be out of my normal kit very quickly, but actually I've still managed to keep most of it on because it's so stretchy and actually it's been really comfortable. Um, I've gone for things like these bib shorts from Allo. They are like a full body suit, so they actually you know they cover all of the bump with no seams and what i've found again it's such a personal thing that i don't want bibs that cut really low because it's not just aesthetic you know you don't want any restriction where the baby is so actually having lycra like this that just covers your whole body underneath your jersey is so so comfortable um, and that's been a really good solution um i've been fortunate enough to order some clothes in a bigger size than i normally would but if you um can find kit in a size that you think is going to see you through the most of pregnancy. You know, I'm at the end of the second trimester now and I'm still able to relatively get in my kit. So yeah, I think size up a little bit and get something that maybe will see you all the way through because I know not everyone can go out and buy more and more and more kit. And finally, I've been lucky enough along the way to get some advice from Britain's most successful Paralympian Dame Sarah Story. Let's hear from her now. I'd follow what your body's telling you to do. And this will be a, a common theme, whether you're riding and exercising or whether you're actually in the process of giving birth is listen to what your body's telling you because you know your body better than anyone and everyone else can help and advise. Um, and that's where the experts can provide that information for you to make an informed decision. But the informed decision is something that will come up as you get closer to um you know, the, the delivery aspects and your birth plan and all that kind of things. And then ultimately, your, the informed decisions that you'll make about the baby when that little person is there, because you decide yourself how you handle the various different challenges each family has. So, yeah, listening to your body and, and trusting your own instincts. Um, obviously, there's the 
uh, oxygen to the baby. That's the vast, the vital thing when it comes to exercise, the nutrients uh, and knowing that you have enough of those nutrients. You know, I went on to the Pregnacare supplements and I researched all of those kind of things. And I stayed on them while I was breastfeeding up until a point that I was happy that my athlete supplements were okay for, for, you know, Charlie, cause he was bigger, Louisa, cause she was bigger. And so all of those things, it's kind of about, you, you do have to do your own research a little bit. And I think that's where this, because there aren't that many books, because it is so individual um, and everybody's body is coming at pregnancy from a different perspective as well. And I certainly found that my body, which is the same body did two pregnancies in two different ways. So that's why it's hard to kind of compare. You can compare notes, but it's a little bit like a training regime. You take the best bits for you and make that into your own personal plan. What I was going to say, you know, I know you said it was slightly different for, for both pregnancies, but how far along were you when you were still able to ride a drop handlebar set up and race and things like that? So I raced with Charlie up until I was 20 weeks. Wow. And that was when my stem came up. So I very quickly moved my stem um, up. On, and it was only, it was time trials. I wasn't doing bunch races. Um, oh, well, I did team pursuit when I was very early pregnant with Charlie. Um, but I think for me, it was just so long as I could ride the bike, the setup didn't matter whether it was my actual race setup. It was more just being in the situ of, a number pinning on your bum sort of thing um, and whether the skin suit fitted or not. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so my stem came up with Charlie quite quickly, actually, because the second time around you expand, your body knows what to do and you go, woo, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I haven't had this. <laughs> and what I was going to say next, what about clothing? Did you, have you got any tricks for me? Because I'm starting to just bust out of everything. <laughs> So my best advice would be to keep your shorts. If you've got a set of shorts, now I can send you some. I sent some to Kira Horn. Um, my shorts when I was pregnant with both of them, actually, um, but the ones when I was pregnant with Charlie, I still have some, I think, and they were just incredibly good at stretching. So they're completely destroyed by the end of your pregnancy. But for me, the biggest mistake would be to have a bigger pair of shorts where the chamois is bigger and also where the leg um gripper it's not actually ideal because although you'll gain a bit of size or I certainly gained a bit of size all over and I also gained a lot of muscle because I was pulling extra weight uphill um I found that having the chamois and the leg strap the right size uh, minimized discomfort so I'd keep your shorts the same and then I just used to steal Barney's jerseys um and hope and so I was in a bigger size for a while and then it gradually his jerseys got stretched as well <laughs> Well, there you have it. Eleanor Barker and I are still waiting for that pregnancy glow to show up, but we are all in agreement that it's so important to listen to your body and the advice of the expert health advisors. But as Dame Sarah Story points out, never be afraid to ask questions and push back if something doesn't feel quite right to you. I'll be back next time delving into all things third trimester. And in the meantime, a huge thank you again to our partners, Cannondale and Alley, and I'd love to hear from you in the comments bar below. So leave your questions there and I'll endeavour to come back to everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye bye for now.